that you've already experienced his wonderful presence. If you haven't, then my goodness, what are you waiting for? Get down on your knees and cry out to God and say, Lord, help me to sense you here in this holy place today. And if you will, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter number 22. I'd like to read verse 19, verse number 20. And as you're turning there, we want to continue to be much in prayer for uh, Ruthie Rudd, who is in a rehab there at Edgewood. Also, Olene Summers went to the hospital this week, and she was having a very difficult time walking and things of that nature. And I believe that they may have taken her to Edgewood. Is that right, Margaret? All right, she's at Edgewood as well. So let's remember Olene Summers uh, there at Oh, at Liberty Commons. Okay, she's at Liberty Commons with uh, Betty, and let's remember them in prayer. Also, Linda Apple uh, had knee surgery uh, this week and uh, went well, and she's at home now. So let's remember Linda Apple and her family in prayer. Annie was at the hospital this week, and uh, God touched her, raised her up. She got home, got over here in time to get her picture taken for the... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the directory, I tell you, that's, that's miracles there, miracles there in the, in the working. But that was great, and we're thankful for that. There's just been so many in the hospital, and so many has had surgeries, and so we want to remember everybody in prayer. God is really blessing, isn't he, though? Really blessing. So if you will, please stand with me now, those that are able. As I begin to read from this passage of Scripture, from the book of Luke, chapter number 22, verse 19, verse number 20, and the Bible says, And he took bread and gave thanks, and break it. And he gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Our Heavenly Father, what a privilege you've given us to come here today. And Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, like Hilda has already made mention of, you are in the house. And dear Heavenly Father, I am thankful for your presence. And dear Heavenly Father, I know in the name of Jesus that you've got something great in store for those who have come today who are willing to humble themselves in your sight and seek your face. Crowd unto you, dear God. I know your ear is open this morning. God, we've seen your mighty hand at work this past week through so many surgeries. We've seen your hand at work, dear Heavenly Father, in so many other instances. And Lord, today we're praying again that God, you'd just do it again. Lord, have your way. Use me, dear God, but hide me behind the cross. Lord, let me lift up Jesus now this morning and the great work he did there at Calvary's cross. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated today, and I've been looking at this passage of Scripture, and I have preached from it a number of times, especially when it comes to having communion, because it is so appropriate. God gives us the reason why He institutes the Lord's Supper, because He doesn't want us to forget what Jesus, His Son, did for us on the cross of Calvary. And I was sitting there as I was reading this passage of Scripture again, God began to point out something else to me. And as I look at this passage of Scripture, I could only visualize now there in that upper room, Jesus with the other disciples there, and he picks up this piece of bread. And the Bible here tells me that when he picked up that piece of bread, I can't help but believe that as he no doubt had that piece of bread in his hand, he knew exactly what he was about to do, and he knew exactly what that piece of bread was going to come to represent concerning what was waiting for him within 24 hours. What was on his mind the last 24 hours of his life here on earth before he arose from the dead? He picked up that bread and he began to pray. And as he began to pray, here's something that really stands out to me in that particular verse. He, give, he gave thanks as he held that bread. And right before he began to break that bread, he gave thanks. Now, friends, you got to realize that when he picked up that piece of bread, he knew exactly what he was getting ready to institute, what that bread was going to be a symbol of, his body broken. And he knew exactly what was waiting for him within 24 hours. He knew all the torture. He knew the pain. Even up in Gethsemane, you know, he remembered and he cried out to God, is there another way? But when he picked up that piece of bread there in the upper room, he gave thanks. He gave thanks for what was about to happen. Now I wonder here as we think about this passage of Scripture just for a few moments, did Jesus really understand what he was going to endure and what he was going to go through? I believe the Scriptures point that out clearly. 
Now this is not on the overhead, and again, I don't want to put you on the spot, so if you want to write down these scriptures, go ahead. But here it is in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. I believe that when he picked this up, Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen to him. I believe he knew the pain that he was going to endure. I believe that he knew the agony that was going to uh, reach throughout his entire body. I believe he knew that he was going to be separated from his father for the first time in all of eternity. And he always, and he goes ahead and says, thank you, God. Thank you, God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He knew what was coming. Why did he give God thanks for what was about to happen? The bread representing his broken body. But he thanked God. Why did he thank God? Because he knew that he was going to go to the cross. He knew that he'd have to endure the pain. The Bible goes on to say there in verse number 2 of chapter 12, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus wanted us to never forget what he was willing to go through because of our sins. And he's instituting the Lord's Supper here, and this is a very vital, very important thing that Jesus has instructed us to continue on to this day 2,000 years later. And Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, what joy? Was he willing to thank God for the opportunity or for the bread, the symbol of the broken body? Why would Jesus thank God for that? Because he's seen you. And he's seen me that needed him to go to Calvary and stand in our place. He's seen us and he thanked God for the opportunity to make a way of salvation for whosoever would call upon his precious name. He thanked God even though he knew what was about to take place. We can go back in the book of Psalms, chapter 22 and verse 14 through verse number 18. You need to write these down and go back. And remember that Jesus knew what he was going to endure and what he was going to go through, but yet he thanked God anyway. Why did he thank God? Because of the joy that was set before him. What joy is that? One of these days, like Hilda and the group sung, I'm going to see Jesus. When I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus. And I want to thank him eye to eye, face to face. I want to thank him for going to that cross and dying there in my place. The Bible says in Psalms 22, verse 14, I am poured out like water. He knew exactly what he was going to go through. All my bones are out of joint. That's the crucifixion on the cross. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potter's share, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaw. And Thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Jesus knew this. And he said, thank you, God. Because if Jesus wouldn't have done what he did, Steve would be lost and on his way to hell. Because there is no other way but through Jesus Christ for a person to receive salvation. Verse number 17 says, I tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vestures. Yes, Jesus knew exactly what he was going to go through. And he says, I'm willing to die for you. I'm willing to suffer for you. I'm willing to go to that cross of Calvary for you. I thank God for the opportunity to do so. And he don't want us to forget it. We can go on in Isaiah 53. And again, this is not on there. Randy, I don't even know if we'll get to anything that I put on there. But God, when I read over these things and I study, I don't just stop studying when I send this in. I just keep studying. God just begins to speak to my heart. And, and so here we are. Verse number 3 of chapter 53 of Isaiah through verse number 9. The Bible says, He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You know who should have gotten that beaten? Old Steve Tucker should have gotten that beaten. You want to know who should have gotten them nails drove through their hands and their feet? Steve Tucker should have had that done. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and whom shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And he was made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Jesus Christ knew exactly what he was going to endure. And you want to know what he thanked God? He took that piece of bread and he was holding it there in his hand and he began to give thanks. And he knew exactly what was going to happen because he broke the bread and he instructed the disciples and he instructed us today that when we partake of this bread, this is a symbol of what I went through so that your sins could be washed away. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, and again, it's not a bear end, I'm sorry. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. He gave thanks, even though the bread was a reminder of what he was going to go through. And he is saying, don't forget. But not only did he institute that the bread was to be a symbol of his body, but he also picked up uh, the cup and he said, this cup is a symbol of my blood. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know what some people think about it, but I know what I think about the blood. I think it's still the blood. Amen. You got that, Randy? It's still the blood. Amen. Eternal life. We Listen feature Mr. Archie Watkins. He's saying, it's still, it's still the blood. Woo. Once I wonder and sing. It's still the blood that cleanses within From the highest star in heaven To the depths of the sea It is still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me There are Saves from sin. It's still the blood that cleanses within. From the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea, it is still the blood of Jesus 
that brings me free to me and it's still the blood yes. that saves from sin yes. it's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea it is still the blood of Jesus that brings me Glory to God, glory to God. Well, the Bible clearly tells us that without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. And Jesus knew that when he would shed his blood, that it would take his life there on that cross of Calvary. But he thanked God anyway. But he doesn't want us to forget what he was willing to do. Not only to suffer, not only to be in torment, not only go through pain, but he knew that he would die there in that mortal body, there on that cross that day. And he still thanked God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Revelations 1 and 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffer without the gate. Friends, today I am thankful for the blood. I'm thankful for Jesus Christ going there to the cross. I'm glad that he was willing to endure all those things that he went through so that my sins could be forgiven, so that he uh, could save my soul. I'm glad today that we can come together and pay special homage to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not a memorial service by no means. A memorial service is for somebody that's dead. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not dead even though he died. He arose from the grave and he's alive right now. And thank God for the power of God. Because he lives, we are going to live also. Now before we partake of this communion service today, God always warns us and tells us that we need to examine ourselves to make sure that there's nothing between us and God. That we should partake of this communion service rightly. Don't do it wrongly because there's consequences of taking communion wrongly. Sometimes it causes people to become sick because they didn't partake of it rightly. Sometimes it even causes some to die. That's how serious this is. So who is it that can participate in their communion? That means we've got something all in common, communion. And we all are coming together to do one thing, and that's to remember what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Number one is, are you saved today? Have you been washed in that precious blood? Have you accepted Jesus' sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for your sins? If you've done that, then you're our candidate to receive communion today. Don't matter how many times you've been here, it doesn't matter anything like that. If you're saved, you are a candidate for communion. But there's also something else you need to consider. You need to search your heart. Make sure there's nothing in your heart that's hindering you from really being able to concentrate on Jesus right now. So when you pick up this piece of bread, you're thinking about Jesus' body that was tormented and went through all that pain on Calvary's, Calvary's cross. When you take this little cup that's going to be passed along in just a few moments, is there anything in your mind that's more important, anything right now got your attention more than what Jesus was willing to shed for you? You wouldn't be saved today if Jesus wouldn't have shed his blood. You wouldn't be saved today if he wouldn't have died on that cross. You wouldn't be saved today if he wouldn't have went through all that torment and that agony and that pain. You wouldn't be saved today. Don't forget what Jesus has done. Here's the altar. It's open if you need to come. Maybe you've never been saved and you'd like to come this morning and receive Jesus Christ. Why don't you step forward right now? Let's stand to our feet. If God's speaking to your heart, why don't you come? Maybe right now, this morning, you've never been saved. You say, well, preacher, why are you asking people to come forward this morning if they've never been saved? Well, I believe with all my heart that when a person gets saved, they're not going to be ashamed of Jesus. 
And I believe that the Bible does say, there's no doubt about it, that confession is made with the mouth. The Bible clearly says that you shall not or you will not be ashamed. So if you're here today, don't be ashamed of Jesus because I'll tell you what, if we are, the Bible also says, Jesus will be ashamed of you. So if you've been saved and you're not publicly proclaimed it, why don't you come? We're going to be having a baptismal service the third Sunday of August. And so why don't you come? If you've been saved but you've never been scripturally baptized by submersion, why don't you come and uh, submit yourself uh, as a candidate for that baptismal service? Why don't you come? Maybe you need to be saved. Why don't you come? Maybe there's some sin in your heart that you've been struggling with and it's, it's got a hold of you and you can't shake it. Why don't you come this morning and repent of it? Why don't you come this morning and ask God to give you strength to overcome it? To forgive you of it, why don't you come? Anybody at all that needs to come. Well, as we've already looked into this passage of Scripture, we've seen that when Jesus picked up the bread, the one thing he did was he gave thanks for it. And then he shared with us what that bread represented and what it meant. So at this time, we're going to ask Brother John, if he will, to ask God to bless this that you are about to receive at this time. Amen. Amen.
The Bible says there, of course, that Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks and then he broke it. And then he said, as often as you partake of this, do it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup that we are about to receive. It is, it is a reminder of what your son Jesus Christ was willing to do there that day on the cross. He gave his life for me. And he gave his life for all of us that have accepted him. And he has forgiven us of all of our sins. And we're thankful, dear God, for his sacrifice. For these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus, after he had shared the bread with the disciples that night, he also passed the cup. And Jesus said, every time you partake of this cup, do it in remembrance of me, of the blood that was shed on Calvary for your sins. Well, God has blessed this service today in a very special way, and I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Don't forget now we will be receiving the uh, pledges and different things for the youth trip. Uh, there'll be ushers at the doors, and so if you can get that taken care of, that'd be wonderful. We're thankful for everything that's already come in. It's been such a blessing. But also tonight, Vacation Bible School, it starts at 6 o'clock, and they're going to have classes for every age group. And they're going to have a meal each night, and tonight included. So if you come, you start out in here at 6 o'clock, and then you go. I think everybody eats at about the same time. Is that right, Josh? Everybody goes and eats at the same time. Then after everybody eats, they disperse and go to different areas. The adults, if you would like to come and have an adult class, after their eating is over and uh, that time period is over, we'll just meet over in the conference room if we need a bigger room, which that would be great. We'll find a bigger room. But uh, there's comfortable seating there. But we'd like for you to come. Can you defeat Satan? That's what we're going to be studying about. Can you defeat Satan and the demons of hell? What kind of powers do they have? And what are their abilities? And what has God given us that we can use to make sure that we can defeat all the things that Satan throws at us? Yes. So come tonight if you'd like to and do that. But we'll be meeting over there after the, morning, after the evening meal there. And like I say, if you can't be here at 6 o'clock, if you want to come about 6.30 or so, some of the adults, then we'll be meeting over there in a the conference room. And, of course, we'll be there, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, something like that, and then... I don't, you know, disperse from there, all right? But let's bow our heads and be dismissed in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, truly this has been a great blessing that you have given us this special time to call to our remembrance all the wonderful things Jesus was willing to go through and do for us. I'm glad today I'm saved, and I'm glad I'm heaven-bound. And Heavenly Father, I pray that now that you go with us and allow us to go with you for these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all, man. Thank